Good morning, and welcome to Stripe Sessions. Uh, we're so excited to have all of you join us here today. Um, I'm confident this is the most exciting event taking place anywhere in technology right now. <laughs> um, I'm also delighted that there are almost twice as many of you here this year as joined us last year. So this is a, a chart here of sessions attendance over time. So as you can see, you know, we're, we're se sessions is almost ready to go out and raise its Series A. Um, so jokes aside, we're investing a lot in this event for a reason. We're extremely grateful for your partnership, for the trust that you all place in us. And we want to share quite candidly and openly some kind of broader context on what it is that we're working on, where we're going, what we're doing. And in return, we want to get your direct feedback on what we could be doing better and where we should be investing more. And so Sessions is not primarily a broadcast event. It is a listening event. And in that, nothing is too small. We know how much you care about the smallest details of your products, and we're just as passionate about the most minute aspects of ours. You know, we want to hear about any frustrating extra clicks or you know, annoying omissions or you know, mishandled edge cases. We often invoke this, this line from, uh, from Picasso. I think it's apocryphally attributed, but, but nonetheless. And Sessions is a turpentine conference. It's been a very big year for Stripe. We've shipped an awful lot. And more importantly, though perhaps less visibly, we've been investing a huge amount in some underlying infrastructure, some foundations that we think are going to enable some really amazing expansion over the next two years. Like This is an inflection time for us. And you're going to hear more about that in a little bit. We've also been working on some totally new products we've been very excited to talk about for a long time. But before we get into all of that, I'd like to just quickly update you with some kind of context on uh, where we are as a business today. So we've long said that Stripe handles billions of dollars a year in transactions. We, we figure that's kind of do some updating. And so we're now disclosing today for the first time that Stripe handles hundreds of billions of dollars in transactions on an annualized basis. And this is a number that continues to compound really rapidly. Our goal is to grow the GDP of the internet, to, to sort of expand internet-enabled commerce. And the thing that's really striking to us in our conversations with all of you is, uh, is how it's still the case, still in, in 2019, that the internet economy is in its earliest stages. So we're investing a lot in the underlying platform to support this growth. We want Stripe to be the fastest improving infrastructure service in the world. And since last sessions, we've actually deployed new versions of the production API almost 4,000 times. This is like the core API that handles charges and, and moves the money. And so that, that works out to about 16 times every weekday. And so when we talk about Stripe sort of continually improving, this is where we're getting at. Whether or not you touch your payments code, we want the platform underneath not only to be getting better, to be, but to be getting better at an accelerating rate. Um, the platform itself is now operating at pretty significant scale. So on a typical day, uh, Stripe now handles about a quarter of a billion API requests. And that peaks at about 13,000 requests every second. And the thing is, you know, we're, we're not like other services. We know that every single one of those requests is presumptively business critical. And so building out world-class security and reliability and infrastructure teams continues to be a central area of focus for us. Actually, later on this afternoon, two Stripe uh, employees and indeed security legends, Niels Provost uh, and Mudge Dadko, will be giving a talk sharing some of how we think about uh, security. So in order to support this growth and scale, uh, we've, been, we've been growing the Stripe organization quickly and, and carefully. Uh, and actually, a couple of weeks ago, we passed 2,000 employees. And here at Sessions last year, we described how we're shifting to this model of uh, how we're kind of prioritizing global expansion and shifting to a model with four global hubs in uh, Seattle, San Francisco, Dublin, and Singapore. And so we've been investing in accordance with that. And in addition, we opened new engineering offices over the past year in Chicago, New York, Mexico City, and in Bangalore. And our non-US offices have been the very fastest growing. 
We also announced our remote hub, where alongside the 150 or so remote engineers who work at Stripe today, over the next couple of years, we're going to hire hundreds more. And any of the engineering managers who work at Stripe or in attendance today, they'd be happy to share some more context on how we're approaching remote work at Stripe. We're investing so heavily outside the US because that's where the growth is coming from. Five out of every six new internet users who are coming online today are based outside of North America and Western Europe. And so we're investing ahead in places like India and Brazil to make sure that we can fully support your global expansion uh, in the years to come. And as an infrastructure provider, we think that being able to do that kind of sustainably over the long term is really important. And so we're proud to be able to fund this growth with a model that's durably cash flow positive. This is partly enabled by the breadth of companies that are building on Stripe. And so over the past year, thousands of totally new companies just founded uh, have, uh, have been launched on Stripe. And those companies joined thousands of businesses that are already building on Stripe, some of them for quite some time, some of them, of course, incredibly successful, and a number of these went public over the past year. And these companies, in turn, are being joined by a rapidly growing set of large established businesses that are shifting their operations to Stripe as they seek to grow their global footprint uh, and to build better online commerce experiences. This is really key. A very important part of the Stripe strategy is we're building for businesses of every size. We're building for the highest potential graduates of accelerators around the world, and we're building for some of the biggest companies in the world. As you all know, the sort of standard pattern in enterprise software is for some innovative product to come along. It gets kind of pulled up market. It gets a bit kind of long in the tooth, a bit stagnant, a bit, a bit calcified. And then in turn, it's replaced by some you know, nimbler and more agile upstart. This is the software cycle of life. Um, this is, of course, really bad for the customers who get stuck using the old version. And so this is why we obsess over startups. Startups are some of the most demanding customers in the world. They can't tolerate complexity, and they simply won't put up with outdated technology. And so our strategy is very deliberately to serve both ends of the continuum and every point in between. This ensures that we can provide the most powerful functionality to the youngest companies in the world, and that we can provide the most forward-thinking technology to the largest and the most established. And so on this topic of functionality, I'd like to invite our chief product officer, Will Gabrick, to the stage. Thank you very much, Patrick. Hi, everyone. Good morning. So we have a rapidly growing suite of products. And as you just heard from Patrick, we aspire to be the fastest improving infrastructure company in the world. He mentioned, for example, that we are deploying a new version of our core API 16 times a day. So you might be asking yourself, what are we improving towards? Well, Stripe's true north is what we now call our global payments and treasury network. Or for short, we say GPTN. The GPTN is programmable infrastructure for global money movement. It's at the core of everything that we build, and it's solving the problems that we hear about most emphatically from all of you. Sure, we do a whole lot that goes beyond the GPTN. We can help you streamline your operations, better understand your customers, and empower your finance teams. And you'll hear a lot more about this later on. But the GPTN is our foundation. There's an enormous variety of businesses building on Stripe. But the single thing that we hear from all of you is that you just want moving money to be as simple as manipulating data in the cloud. You just want to accept money from your customers in any currency, country, and payment method. And you just want to be able to pay it out again in any currency to bank accounts all over the world. This is easy in theory, but excruciatingly onerous in practice. Because once banks and you know, financial regulations and just money in general comes into the picture, you're talking about tons of engineers and droves of lawyers and flocks of compliance experts and many years of development. So at its most basic, Stripe exists just to solve this problem. And it's what the GPTN is designed for. We're building three core services. There's payments acceptance, there's storage and management of funds, and there's payouts. And for each, we could invest in broadening geographic coverage and deepening and optimizing functionality to a degree that simply wouldn't make sense for any individual company. So let's start with payments acceptance. 
This is about giving your business a high conversion rate, low fraud, localized payments experience, no matter where in the world it operates. Now, as you all know, if you use Stripe today, you can already accept payments from customers in 195 countries. And until yesterday, we supported domestic payments acceptance in 23 countries. If you're a payment expert out there, what I mean by domestic acceptance is essentially local acquiring. It means lower costs and higher authorization rates. Well, yesterday, we launched eight additional European countries. And today, I'm excited to announce that by the end of 2019, we'll also support domestic acceptance in Mexico, Malaysia, Brazil, Bulgaria, Romania, Hungary, Thailand, and the Czech Republic. This will bring us to 40 countries covering nearly 70% of the global economy. And acceptance is also about payment methods, and especially non-card payment methods. This is an area where we've been investing a whole lot. We already support more than a dozen payment methods, including Ideal, Alipay, and SEPA, but our progress is going to accelerate dramatically in the months ahead. By the end of the year, we're adding support for 12 additional payment methods, everything from FPX in Malaysia to Konbini in Japan and Boletos in Brazil. In fact, this year we became the first non-bank ever to integrate directly with the French payment scheme Carte Bancaire. This was an enormous undertaking and one that wouldn't make sense for any individual company to do for only for its own benefit. But Carte Bancaire is the largest payments network in France, and we're seeing a one to two percentage point uplift in acceptance rates. So when you step back and think about it, this is more than worth it to Stripe. We think about the benefit to all of you. And the beauty of the GPTN is that you'll get all of this, all of these countries and all these payment methods and everything that's to come via a single integration. So once you've integrated with Stripe, without changing a line of code, you can quite literally launch countries and payment methods via minute config changes or clicks in the Stripe dashboard. But acceptance isn't just about coverage. It's also about maximizing conversion and minimizing fraud. And we are relentlessly optimizing Stripe to do just that. Here are just a few examples. For the fourth year running, Stripe Radar has dramatically reduced fraud across the Stripe network by 15% worldwide and by over 30% in Europe. And we've done this without any material increase in false positives. Radar can do this because of the sheer scale at which we operate. Radar is today blocking roughly $500 million of fraud every single month, and that number is rapidly growing. And as many of you probably know, unfortunately, strong customer authentication is rolling out in Europe. It is a conversion killer that requires your customers to confirm payments by default unless an exemption applies. So we built a totally new SCA acceptance engine that understands all the arcane rules and how each is being implemented by every single one of the hundreds of issuers across Europe. So we're maximizing your conversion while ensuring that you remain compliant with these rapidly changing regulations. And to increase speed and conversion where a second factor is required, whether in Europe or elsewhere, we built our very own 3DS server from the ground up. It's faster, it's more reliable, and has a better UI. And we're even thinking about acceptance from the other side of the transaction. Earlier this year, we acquired a company, TouchTech, that improves conversion by providing better transaction authentication products to banks and fintech companies in Europe, including Revolut and 26 and TransferWise. And finally, today, we're launching an engine to increase your network acceptance rates. It's powered by machine learning and dynamically routes, adapts, and retries your transactions in real time. We moved into beta a few months ago, and it's already turned over half a billion dollars of would-be declines into revenue without our users having to lift a finger. Stay tuned for two breakout talks on this later on. So Patrick referred to all of this and these sorts of things as turpentine. And I know this is a lot of detail with the innards of payment systems, but it's these highly specific, unglamorous, and often operational investments that protect you from fraud and increase your revenue. And this is the kind of stuff that we geek out about every single day at Stripe. OK, so in addition to building downwards into the guts of the global financial system, we're also building upwards to the pixels on the page. Two powerful examples are Stripe Terminal and Stripe Checkout. At Sessions last year, we unveiled Stripe Terminal for in-person payments. It extends the rest of Stripe into the physical world. So you can do things like 
kick off a monthly subscription the moment that a customer dips their card in a reader. Terminal has been especially popular with internet-first retailers like Warby Parker and Reformation, and also with platforms like Fair Harbor and MindBody. It had a phenomenal first year, with volume growing more than 6x and accelerating. Today, we're announcing a few updates. For one, we made it easier to order and manage devices. You can now do so directly from the Stripe dashboard and very soon via the API. And if you're a platform, you can customize the branding of the packaging of the devices and even of the hardware itself. So it can be your brand from end to end. And today, we're beginning Terminal's international expansion, starting with Canada, complete with Interact support. Singapore will fast follow later this fall, and many more countries will launch next year. So switching for a second from in-person payments back to online, we've also been improve, uh, busy improving Stripe Checkout. Checkout started all the way back in 2013 as simply the easiest way to get started accepting payments online. But it's turned into something quite different. It's the most powerful, vertically integrated, dynamic payments form on the web. It still takes just minutes to integrate, and out of the box, it supports Apple Pay, 3D Secure, Stripe Billing for subscriptions, Stripe Connect for marketplaces and platforms, full language localization, address fields that automatically adjust based on the country of the buyer, and a UI that adapts beautifully to mobile and tablet experiences. And Checkout is powerful in ways that aren't immediately obvious, in part because it works so well with Stripe's other products. As an example, let's take a look at how Checkout and Radar work together. When a trustworthy customer comes onto a Stripe checkout page, Radar assesses their risk in milliseconds, quickly determines they're legitimate, and the transaction goes through smoothly. But now let's look at the opposite case. If a suspicious customer hits a checkout page, Radar will detect it, and checkout will automatically add an additional layer of authentication on the fly. In fact, the combination of Radar and checkout is so powerful that we recently launched chargeback protection. This allows Stripe checkout users to do away with chargebacks entirely. So think about that for a second. A world without chargebacks sounds magical. We're investing heavily in checkout. And over the next year, we'll add dozens of payment methods and tons more customization options, including full brand control for all of you and the ability to host checkout on your own domain. So that's some of what we've been up to on payment acceptance. We're helping you improve conversion and grow your revenue while protecting you from fraud. And the work we're doing on your behalf spans dozens of countries and payment methods and runs all the way from the front end of the transaction deep down into the bare metal of network and banking integrations around the world. Now let's turn for a second to the ways in which the GPTN helps you store and manage money in the cloud. Because if you're going to accept payments, you need somewhere to hold the funds. We want to make it easy, simple, immediate for you to spin up online money repos in the cloud anywhere in the world. And this is where Stripe Connect comes in. With Connect, you can programmatically create Stripe accounts, give them the ability to process payments or receive payouts, issue them physical or virtual cards, and even provide them with a full Stripe dashboard. Connect is now the default way to build a platform or marketplace on the internet. It powers many thousands of them, including some of the largest and fastest growing in the world, like Shopify, Xero, Lyft, and Deliveroo. And it's getting both more powerful and easier to integrate. Historically, one of the biggest hurdles to going live with Connect was managing complex and disparate know your customer and onboarding requirements that vary country by country and depend on the particular account capabilities you want to use. To help with this, we created Express, a fully Stripe-hosted onboarding form. It saves platforms the slog of updating their onboarding every single time they enter a new market or want to add a new capability or when payments and financial regulations change, as they very often do. Until today, it's only been available in the US and Canada, and yet it's by far the most popular onboarding mode for new Connect platforms. Today, we're launching Express in 28 new countries. With this footprint, Express can quite literally reduce months or years of engineering and compliance work to minutes. To show you what this feels like in action, I'd like to invite Roman Hewitt to the stage. Roman is now going to build a global rental marketplace from scratch in under five minutes. Good luck. Wow. Good morning, everyone. I'm always up for a challenge, so let's set a timer and get started. Perfect. Say we want to build a marketplace to let travelers rent beautiful homes around the world. Homeowners can list their place on the platform and get paid. We're calling it Caval. 
the only thing that developers love more than writing code is not writing code. So we've created a whole new set of samples. We provide these samples to let anyone get a SaaS or a marketplace started from scratch without doing days of research, but also to help developers with established integration find building blocks that use our best practices and code patterns. Here is, for instance, an example of a connect marketplace that sounds pretty close to what we want to build. In addition, we're launching a brand new command line interface to improve Strap's developer experience. This CLI is a great companion that brings powerful tools right inside your command prompt. And just type Stripe, and here we go. It has a ton of amazing features. And just to name a few, you can now interact with any part of the Stripe API, debug your code with live logs, and even receive webhook events locally on your machine with the built-in proxy. And we'll actually, uh, we're actually going to see that uh, in action in a moment. Great. So let's use the CLI to actually start our marketplace. That command is now copied. So Let's uh, name it Cavorn. Here we go, and press Enter. Now, the next step for me will be to choose the language of the server. In this case, I'm going to pick Node. And right there, we're cloning a project, setting up the marketplace using our Stripe account, so the scaffolding of our variables, the branding, and everything else is automatically set up for me using my API keys. So we can navigate inside the folder now, and we can even open that uh, project on VS Code. Here it is. And that's the index page. Now, let's take a look at, uh, at the server. Uh, all right, so I'm going to run the server right here and open up this marketplace in the browser. So it's right here. It's up and running. And now we can start focusing on the specifics for Cavon. So it's time to go back to the code and start making some changes. So say, for instance, that placeholder text we just saw, uh, we should probably say something different, like book, unique, places to stay around the globe. Save, and that's it. It's updated. So isn't that really awesome? Like We went from nothing to having an actual marketplace with the ability to onboard sellers, accept payments, and set payouts in what? Maybe just right over two minutes. Obviously, that sample is inspired by one of the most successful marketplaces in the world. But of course, you can use it to build any kind of platform, not just rental uh, for homes. Because Connect marketplaces are built on the global payments and treasury network that Will described, we can go global on day one. We're using Express to quickly onboard uh, homeowners with our branded onboarding flow. Laura owns a house in Singapore, and she wants to be our first host, so let's test our onboarding to our service. With Express, we can quickly collect the info we'll need to pay our homeowners. And these firms are localized, they're mobile friendly, and most importantly, they request only the minimum details in every country. So here we're going to use a test code. If I were to switch my locale right here, for instance, you would see all of that translated in Chinese. So I'm going to fill in a home address, a tax ID, click Next. And finally, the last step for Laura will be to specify how she'd like to get paid. So in this case, we're just going to use a test bank account for now. And that's it. We're ready to it back to the site, and Laura is ready to list a home. Let's just think about that for a second. Like We just onboarded a user in Singapore with everything localized, from the date formatting to the regex for the tax ID. Did you really want to build that for Singapore yourself on top of all the other 30 markets that you might want to go into? Luckily, Stripe handles most of the hard work for us here. And with our great developer tools, we can now use Connect from any entry point to Stripe's infrastructure, the dashboard, the API, and even the CLI now. And I guess we're done with a minute to spare. All right. Well, man, you saw 47 seconds. Nice job. Thank you. OK, so there you have it. With Connect and Express Onboarding, you can spin up accounts to accept and store funds all over the world in a matter of minutes. As many of you are probably all too aware, a prerequisite of good onboarding is the ability to verify personal identity. There are a bunch of other reasons you might want to verify someone's identity online. It could be confirming an age requirement or getting more information to mitigate fraud. Or if you're a rentals platform like Cowpole, maybe you need to screen property owners. It's super early, and we're going to be investing a lot in ID verification. We mentioned earlier that Sessions is a learning conference, and a key part of how Stripe builds products is getting them in front of our users as early as possible and long before they're publicly available. This allows us to iterate based on your feedback. And so today, we want to give you a sneak peek at the product we're building for ID verification. Let's take a look. All right. 
our marketplace is now live. And yes, as Will mentioned, let's say we want to verify a renter's identity before they book a home. Stripe is building a new identity product that can instantly verify a person's details. All it takes is just a few lines of code. Let me actually walk you through them. Right here, I can just pass some basic information to Stripe to prepare the verification flow. We can specify the type of, uh, of document we'd like to, to verify, in this case, an identity document. And finally, I'm passing here the account email so I can track who I'm trying to verify in my system. And with that, I get back a URL, and I can send my users uh, to this very simple flow. It's really that simple. Stripe will handle all the rest for me. So let's see it in action. I just signed up here as a customer of our marketplace. I'm interested in Lara's home in Singapore as I'm at an next vacation spot. Now, this is the first time I'm using the service, so I'll need to verify my identity before I can complete the booking. I will be guided through a very simple onboarding to take a photo of my ID or passport. But right before we do that, let me actually use our CLI to receive events happening live on the platform so we can see what's happening behind the scenes. Great. So now let's go ahead and click Verify. I'm going to use my California driver's license right here. I'm going to bring the front side of the license in front of the camera right here. Perfect. Next, I'm going to take a photo of the back side. Here we go. That looks good. As you can probably tell on the screen, this was a made-up ID. I didn't want any of you to pretend to be me. So we actually had to hard code this ID in our system. Otherwise, our verification API would have rejected it as a forgery. All right, looks good. So let's submit. And that's it. In just a few seconds, Stripe verifies that ID, and we're back on Cavalm. And you don't even have to wait for that verification to complete. You can receive a webhook event uh, to, to easily update your data store or even email your customer when that verification process completes. Jumping back to our CLI, as you can see, some events came through, and that's the successful event of that verification we just tried. Awesome. So now we're verified, so I can go ahead and complete my booking. Let's use Apple Pay and Touch ID. I have a card in my wallet right here. All right. Ready? Don't blink. And processing payment, and that's done. And this was real payment, by the way. And we just sent that money to Laura's account on Connect. So with a few extra lines of code, we just made our platform safer by verifying the identity of every renter. We've not only saved a lot of engineering time, Stripe also tokenizes and encrypts sensitive data, such as passports and social security numbers. So these kind of personal information will never touch your servers. Back to you, Will. So for platforms like Cavalm, ID verification is a critical and surprisingly tricky part of managing accounts that store and receive funds in the cloud. And the demo you, you just saw uh, didn't just take photos and queue them for manual review. Yes, this particular example is a fake, but if we had Roman's real ID there, the authenticity of the ID itself would have been verified. The information on the ID was extracted via ML and computer vision, and it was cross-checked in real time against all relevant government databases. That's how the product works today. And fortunately, I know Roman well enough to say, even though it's a fake, that is Roman. There's obviously plenty more we could say about how the GPTN helps you store and manage money in the cloud moving money between balances, letting you transmute it between currencies, handling regulatory reporting and other licensing requirements on your behalf. But let's press on. The third and final pillar of our global payments and treasury network is payouts to bank accounts, Stripe accounts, or Stripe-issued cards all over the world. And with payouts, what matters the most to all of you is speed and geographic reach. A few years ago, we launched instant payouts to help Lyft drivers get paid immediately upon completing their rides. It's now a wildly popular product with platforms. Instacart, DoorDash, Care.com, GoDaddy, and many more are all using it. Well, today, we're beginning to roll out instant payouts beyond platforms to all US Stripe accounts. So if you make a sale today, you can have your money in hand immediately. And we're also speeding up payouts outside the US. We're introducing faster, three-day payouts in any market that's currently slower than this, and we'll get every market to two days or faster in 2020. Last year, we launched Stripe Issuing, which lets you programmatically create physical and virtual cards and fund them directly from your Stripe account. So it's sort of like a delegated payout. 
Someone else actually spends the money, but you get to say where and how. And we've been amazed by the number and variety of companies using issuing. There's QuadPay for consumer finances, there's uh, Embers for expenses, Zestful for employee perks, and now even Zipcar's gas cards run on Stripe issuing. And over the past year, we've made a bunch of improvements. We added support for 3DS. We launched new spending controls, both in the dashboard and via the API. So you can now set overall spending limits, time-based limits, and even control the categories of spend. For example, Zipcar can specify these cards are only valid to purchase fuel. Well, starting today, we're making it even easier for you to order branded physical cards for your users, your couriers, or whatever your business requires. Just upload your logo. Choose a background color, and your custom cards will ship to you in two days. While well, issuing is about paying out to cards, what if you want to pay out to bank accounts all over the world? These could be suppliers, freelancers, contractors, marketplace sellers. There could be thousands or even millions of them. There simply hasn't been a good solution for this, and you all have been asking for it for years. In fact, it's quite possibly the most vehement product request we've ever heard. So I am particularly excited today to announce that we're finally solving this problem. You can now make programmatic global payouts directly from your Stripe account to bank accounts all over the world. We're starting with 45 recipient countries, and that number will grow rapidly. Payouts happen in local currencies over local banking rails, so it's fast, it's cheap, and most importantly, with Stripe Payouts, it's now possible. To show us how this works in action, here's Romain one last time. Thank you. Fast forward, it's amazing how Cavalm has grown. We've seen homeowners listing their homes in a few dozen countries. A few minutes ago, we rented Laura's home in Singapore and paid her in USD with Apple Pay. She can now look at her balance right here in Singapore dollars. And she can also click to see her Express dashboard. And by the way, for platform, it's a very tedious task to build a custom dashboard and keep track of all the payouts and banking details. Express does this for us automatically. Now let's talk about payouts, as we need to get homeowners their money. We can choose a rolling schedule for payouts, for, ex for instance, on a weekly basis, or we can provide on-demand payouts with a button in their mobile app or their dashboard. We know people love to receive their, receive their funds immediately. At Cavorm, we also wanted to get the pulse of our marketplace, so we built a real-time visualization of all the payouts we're making around the world. So you can see, for instance, on the screen, the ones we've been making uh, this morning. But it's nothing like a personal touch, so let's send Laura a first payout right now. She also happens to be one of our tech leads in Singapore, so let's see if I can get her on FaceTime. Hopefully, she's not asleep yet. Hey, Laura, how are you? Hey, hey everyone, I'm great. How are you doing? Great, great. Thank you. I'm calling you from stage at Sessions in SF. And we are excited for a great day meeting all the Stripe users. You can probably see all of them here if you want to wave. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much for joining us. I know it's really late for you in Singapore. I have great news for you. You've actually made some uh, good rentals on Cav Home, so I'm about to send you your very first uh, payout. So if you can bear with me uh, and stay on the call for a moment. All right, so as Will mentioned, we can do all of those payouts programmatically. So I'm going to use the CLI to initiate a payout to Laura. So if we switch the terminal, that's the Stripe account for Laura. Her currency will be SGD. And the amount, I'm going to try to pay almost like pretty much the entire balance she has, so like 1,080 uh, Singaporean dollars, and hit send. And that's it. We just made a payout. And that's a real payout, by the way. You can see it here for developers in the room. It's live mode. And now, if we go back to our globe, we can see the payment we just made by listening to uh, the webhook events in real time on the platform. But in addition, we're also listening to those webhook events to send text messages to our homeowners around the world using the Twilio API so we could let them know that the money is on the way. So let's see with Laura if she actually received her payout. Hey, Laura, are you still here? Yes, I am, and woohoo! There we go. She just received our SMS. And so money is on the way. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Laura. Have a great night. Have a great session. Thank you. All right. 
behind the scenes, Stripe's GPTN actually converted USD into SGD, and the money just hit our bank account in Singapore nearly instantly. We can now programmatically create cross-border payouts to 45 countries. That means that today, Connect Platform can send money to users in Thailand, Poland, Indonesia, just to name a few with no extra engineering work. So let's move to a different part of the world. We have Tomar here, for instance. He is a homeowner in Israel. And as you can see on the screen, he's tied to make um, some rental. He has a balance in shekel, his local currency in Israel. So let's copy his account ID, and let's just go ahead and send also a payout to, uh, to Tomar. So I'm just going to take that command we just did pass the account ID. This time around, the currency will be ILS for the shekel. And I'm just going to give him like pretty much half of his balance to try. So like 1,200 shekel, that's in cents. All right, send it. Oh, sounds like he doesn't have enough in his account. So let's go a bit under. Perfect. And the payout went through. And if we go back to the globe, there it is. We just made a payment, uh, a payout of 12 shackle to Tomer. In fact, let's issue all the remaining payouts for people all around the world that are already making some, uh, that have already made some rentals, and you can see them live here on the globe. This is real money moving as we speak, by the way. So, if we recap, what just happened? I guess we turned off the clock, but it's been about like seven minutes or so, and in that time, we built the marketplace. We onboarded sellers in dozens of countries. I rented a home in Singapore. We verified my identity. I paid in uh, USD using Apple Pay. We transferred that money to Laura in Singapore in SGD, and she just confirmed with us on the phone that money is about to hit a bank account. And now what you're looking at here is a real-time visualization of, re like, of cross-border uh, payouts in 45 countries. It's pretty awesome. So Stripe let us expand globally and quickly. That's the power of the global payments and treasury network. This new global payouts functionality has amazing real-world use cases, some of which are near and dear to our hearts as engineers. So today, I'm super excited to welcome Devon Zugol to the stage, product lead for GitHub sponsors, to show off how they're using Connect. Thank you. Thanks, Roman. At the beginning of the summer, we announced the beta of GitHub sponsors. GitHub Sponsors is a new way to financially support the developers who design, build, and maintain the open source software that you use every day. Now, anyone with a GitHub account can sponsor a developer contributing to an open source project. And we match it up to $5,000 per developer. We're proud to make this opportunity available to developers all around the world. And to do that, we are partnering with Stripe to support payouts in dozens of countries. Stripe is crucial to scaling the program. The flow is so clean and makes our operations so much more streamlined. We rely on it to expand globally. In fact, let's go ahead and launch GitHub sponsors to a few new countries in beta today. Stripe launched support for eight new countries this morning, so let's th turn them on for GitHub right now. We'll just scroll down to our Connect settings, We'll go to our countries list, and we'll check the boxes for Estonia, Greece, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, Portugal, Slovakia, and Slovenia, and press Save. And there we go. We actually just launched eight new countries live on stage. You can send real donations now to real developers in any of those countries. We're excited to support open source developers in more places and to scale GitHub sponsors with Stripe. I'll be hanging around sessions today if you'd like to learn more about GitHub sponsors. Please come chat with me. Thank you so much, Devin. One of the things that I love so much about GitHub sponsors is that it's creating new economic opportunity out of thin air. With a few clicks, Devin just expanded the global economy. These sorts of new economic connections, in this case between open source contributors and sponsors, are exactly why we're building the GPTN. The GPTN is about making the global financial system programmable. It's about enabling you to accept, store, and pay out money in the cloud. As you just saw, this year we made a ton of progress. Here are a few vitals from the end of 2018. And here's what will be at the end of this year. 
But of course, most of the progress still lies ahead. And next year, we'll support payment acceptance domestically for businesses in more than 95 countries. We'll support payouts over local bank rails in more than 100 countries. We'll more than double the number of payment methods in checkout and the API. We'll launch an FX product that allows you to seamlessly shift between currencies in the cloud. We'll support instant payouts to more than 90% of our users, and we'll speed up payouts for everyone else to one to two days. And you'll get all of this and the full power of the GPTN via a single integration that gets better 16 times a day. I'd now like to welcome to the stage Stripe's COO, Claire, Claire Hughes-Johnson. Good morning, and good evening to those of you in Europe joining our live stream. Uh, when I joined Stripe, we were roughly 170 people, and my assignment was scale. Often, scale refers to technical infrastructure, but in my case, it was the other part of that big equation, which is the people, the systems, and the tools to help run the company. And the reality when it comes to those tools, which many of you know, I think, is that they come last when it comes to investing in running the company. Uh, and at Stripe, we think about tools differently. And I think it comes from our core API development. Um, the beauty of an API is it gives you building blocks, and you compose those blocks into what your business needs. The infrastructure that Will spoke about, the global payments and treasury network, is a huge productivity boost for your engineering teams. But I want to talk today about how we can extend that leverage, provide new building blocks to other internal teams. Because ultimately, that infrastructure exists to make people, not just developers, more efficient and effective. So let's talk about those people and those teams, finance, operations, and a group of work I'll call revenue, because who doesn't want more revenue? In more than 15 years working at high growth companies and advising several others, I can safely say that one function that really makes a company tick but often goes underappreciated is finance. One of our accountants recently said, I'm not an accountant to do data munging. I'm an accountant to do real accounting. But the pain of data munging when you need to close the books is real. Exporting transaction data, reconciling to other systems, it's not fun. So starting a few months ago, we've been rolling out financial reporting to help your teams produce the information they need in record time. No more running the data down. You can export these reports in a few seconds with custom date ranges and granular transaction data. Even more powerful is our custom analytics tool, Sigma. The power of Sigma is that you get to build the reports you need for your business perform SQL queries right from the dashboard, no ETL, and schedule delivery of the reports into an email distribution list or whatever notification you want. Sigma is growing nicely, and it's become an integral tool for running companies like Slack, Order My Gear, and DoorDash. Soon, your Stripe data will be available in Sigma in 24 hours, and next year it will be real time. We've also added ERP integrations for NetSuite and Xero, if you use these platforms, you can now automatically sync your Stripe data with these systems. And we'd love feedback today on other integrations that you'd like to see. For those of you familiar with GAAP accounting requirements, we're launching a revenue recognition product beta today for our billing product. Monetization projects often include incredibly creative ways to charge, pricing experiments, and the operational work is a huge burden to manage all of that. No matter how many plan adjustments you make or your customers make, our revenue recognition product is there for you. And to further your market expansion, Billing Now provides tax rate support for invoices and subscriptions. And finally, if you're working to understand and optimize the underlying network costs, we offer next day billing reporting and robust transaction and fee level reporting. We're the only payments company to offer the detail on your fees, why you're paying what for each transaction. We did it for you, finance friends. Every day, I find myself thinking about operations teams, our operations teams at Stripe, but the operations teams at all of your companies. Risk, support, business operations, they increasingly get their work done in Stripe. 
They spend their day reviewing transactions, checking customer information, taking actions in the Stripe dashboard. And for these power users, it's about making that dashboard much better. We've started rolling out a new customizable dashboard so operations teams can choose exactly which information they want to see and organize the layout to suit their workflows. We've made hundreds of other improvements. For instance, search is now 50% faster with direct navigation and preview items. It's just fewer clicks to find what you need. And this is a big deal. It makes support agents a ton more productive. For Connect platforms, operations teams can now use the dashboard to easily execute admin tasks without requiring any code from your developers. Creating new accounts, checking verification status, sending payouts. There are thousands of partners who work with Stripe to power payments on their platforms, and we're excited to continue to invest in features and functionality for their teams. Although I admit that operations teams are my people, I don't think we can underestimate the huge impact in various actions that teams take to grow revenue. The key is productionizing your business model with minimal engineering work so those growth teams get the magic wands we're all seeking. A moment ago, I shared the RevRec features we launched for Stripe Billing. Stripe Billing is an engine for subscriptions, invoices, and recurring revenue management. It's not just about SaaS. It's really for any company with recurring revenue, whether that's an on-demand platform or a media subscription. And our recent improvements to billing really represent those small increases in efficiency that add up to big revenue improvements. And better, your team doesn't even have to think about it. For example, our work optimizing Stripe's hosted invoices UI and to intelligently offer the right payment methods means our invoices get paid three times faster than traditional invoices. And we're putting our data to work for your teams. We've improved retry logic using next generation machine learning models. And last year, 90% of invoices on Stripe were paid on the first attempt. But with Stripe smart retries, users recovered 40% of those remaining failed payments. Just think about it. For a business with 100 million in revenue, that's 4 million in additional sales. And even better, no lengthy collections process. Just a single click, and we do the work for you. And billing now really helps you understand customer retention and lifetime value, showing cohort analyses that automatically account for data noise, like the intricacies in refund handling. Finally, this year, we brought the power of Stripe billing to Europe, Australia, New Zealand, and Singapore. Billing now supports invoices for those countries localized to the requirements of each of them, including handling taxes like VAT in the EU and GST in Australia. There's no singular answer to revenue maximization. The goal is to give you control and insight into the many optimizations that collectively improve your business over time. Really, we're dedicated to all the teams that help your companies run. Thank you to those teams. We're investing in your tools. And today, we're taking it a step further to help businesses manage their spend. To tell you more, I'd like to invite Christina Cordova to the stage. Thanks, Claire. As Patrick mentioned, what we build is guided by all of you. I've been at Stripe for seven years. And back in 2013, I went to Lyft's office and sat next to a woman on their finance team as she was manually paying out every driver one by one from Lyft's bank account. So we decided to build Connect, and we work with Lyft to automate payouts for all of their drivers. Whether it's paying a Lyft driver in Washington or a GitHub developer in Warsaw, if you take a step back, these are all different flavors of the same problem. We've been working for years to help you get money into the hands of the right people. Stripe Connect is part of it. Instant payouts is part of it. But we were missing an important piece of the equation. Just as Lyft's team was having a rough time paying out drivers, most of us are still having a rough time managing corporate spend. And you heard it from Claire earlier. We're truly dedicated to optimizing your operations so you can focus on what's critical for your business. So how can Stripe help? Today, we're taking our first step in making it easier to manage your spend with the Stripe Corporate Card, a credit card for fast-growing businesses. 
We built the Stripe corporate card atop the foundation laid last year with Stripe issuing, which brings a few distinct benefits. First, you can get cards into the hands of your employees in minutes. All you need is a Stripe account. No new integration or lengthy application required. You create a new account and card with your brand in the dashboard, and your employees can instantly use it for online purchases or with Apple and Google Pay. You can also get a physical copy of the card in just a few days. Second, dynamic spending controls let you determine exactly how your money is spent. Assign spending limits specific to each cardholder and block or allow certain categories of spend on certain merchants. Third, with real-time expense reporting, your finance team can stop worrying about hounding employees for receipts. And it's as simple as you'd expect from Stripe. You'll get a text when you make a purchase, reply with a photo of your receipt, and you're all set. When we asked you about rewards, you made it clear that you wanted to get cash back on what you actually spent your money on. We know that 5% back on gas doesn't help much if you spend most of your money on AWS. But for every business, that's different. So the Stripe corporate card will dynamically determine your top two categories of spend in a given month for which you'll earn the most rewards. And we'll apply those rewards to your bill automatically each month. There's no need to worry about managing a bunch of points, building up in some convoluted rewards portal. We let you focus on your business instead of optimizing credit card points. Finally, integrations with financial software like QuickBooks and Expensify make it easy to plug the Stripe corporate card into your existing workflows. And you'll get additional new benefits from partners like Google and Intercom. We're incredibly excited to help you invest money in growing your business. To request an invitation to join the beta, visit stripe.com slash card. If you want to take a look at the cards, learn more, or share some of your feedback, I'll be around later today. Thanks. Thank you, Christina. I joined Stripe because we aim to be a force multiplier for other businesses. As Patrick said, Stripe's mission is to increase the GDP of the internet. And one multiplier that provides leverage across all the teams we mentioned is capital. Helping businesses grow means job creation. Over the last quarter century, almost two thirds of net new jobs have come from startups. These companies have many growth levers available if only they had the capital to pull them, to hire that next engineer, spin up the next server, put out a digital marketing campaign. That's what economic growth requires. And this really matters right now. Since 2008, banks have reduced their lending to businesses by almost half, which is why I'm personally excited that we announced Stripe Capital last week. It's an easy way for internet businesses to get the funds they need. It may not feel relevant to everyone in this audience today, but it's going to be relevant to some folks that I hope are sitting here five years from now. And it's also relevant to the platforms and our partners in the room. With Stripe Capital, you can now build a new offering to help businesses running on your platform get the capital they need to invest in growth. Thank you. All right. We've been busy. Um, let's quickly recap what you heard today. So we're investing massively in the GPTN, which is at the heart of everything that we do. And we'll, we'll add more coverage to it over the next year than we did in the last four. We're adding support for ML-based live identity verification. We're adding global payouts to any bank account, starting in 45 countries. And we're launching Express to 28 countries. We're accelerating payouts globally. As you just heard from Claire, we just launched Stripe Capital. And we're investing an enormous amount in tools and applications that give you the organizational leverage that makes sure the only bottleneck on your growth is customer demand. This spans everything from billing to the corporate card. When we talk about building a cloud platform for global money movement, this is what we mean. So 
We hope this gives you a useful sense for where we'll be heading. But as we discussed, our main goal today is to spend time with all of you. So breakout talks start in just a moment. The business track will be right here. The tech track is across the hallway. We also have office hours with Stripe engineers and Stripe product managers. We'd love to have one-on-one -on -one discussions with you and to hear your feedback live. And overall, there are 250 Stripe employees here today. We'll all be wearing blue badges. Please come talk to us. Say hi. Again, share your thoughts. We will be taking notes. So Stripe is a new kind of economic platform for the internet. We hope to unlock a lot of new possibilities and new opportunities. And we know that you all will continue to surprise us with what you build, and we couldn't be more excited to support your growth in the years ahead. So thank you for working with us, and enjoy today.